Hi everyone, this is Clint from Persuasive Evangelism and today we're going to go over this book, uh, Against the Flow by John Lennox, one of my favorite authors. Um, the, and it says, The Inspiration of Daniel in an Age of Relativism. So if you want to do a study on the book of Daniel in the Old Testament, um, this I totally recommend this book. It's thorough, it goes over the history, theology, how it relates today, archaeology. Um, and the book of Daniel itself is amazing on how much stuff happens in it. Um, such as uh, Daniel... Oh, the birds just started <laughs> flying, making a noise. Uh, so Daniel, um, you know, this was during the captivity of Israel. Um, the Babylon Empire took over Israel and brought a lot of them captives to Babylon, the greatest city at that time. So Daniel and these others were brought there probably as, you know, young men and um, they kept their faith of Christ or of, of um, the Jewish faith. Um, even though they were in this massive city, the biggest city, you know, probably on, on earth at that time with um, all these other religions, they, they excelled in astronomy, mathematics, math and um the giant ziggurats of pyramids and um, all this stuff but they kept their faith um so he talks about how that relates today um i did want to read something just the intro to the book part of the intro if i can get to it so daniel's story is one of extraordinary faith in god in god lived out to the pinnacle of executive power in the full glare of public life it relates to pivotal events in the lives of four friends daniel hananiah Mish mishael and as azariah who were born in the teeny state of judah in the middle of the east around two and a half thousand years ago um, what makes the story of their faith remarkable is that they did not simply continue the private devotion to god that they had developed in their homeland they maintained a high-profile public witness in a pluralistic society that became increasingly antagonistic to their faith. This is why their story has such a powerful message for us today. Strong currents of pluralism and secularism in contemporary Western society, reinforced by the paralyzing political correctness, increasingly push expressions of faith in God to the margins, confining it, if possible, to the private sphere it is becoming less and less the done thing to mention God in public, let alone to confess to believing in anything exclusive and absolute, such as the uniqueness of Jesus Christ as the Son of God and Savior. Society, let me turn the page. Society tolerates the practice of the Christian faith in private devotions and in church services, but it increasingly deprecates public witness to the relativists and secularists. Public witness to faith in God smacks too much of proselytizing and fundamentalist extremism. They therefore regard it more and more as a threat to the social stability of human freedom. Um, and there it goes down. Um, if Daniel and his three friends were with us today, I have no doubt they would be in the vanguard of, of the public debate, leading the counter charge against the self styled four horsemen of the new atheism. Um, this will surely strengthen our resolve not only to put our heads above the parapet, but also to make sure in advance that our minds and hearts are prepared, that our helmets are securely on so that we do not get blown away in the first salvo so it talks about you know how it relates to us even though they were taken to this you know massive kingdom they still kept their faith in christ and kept or in god and kept it public um and there's so much that happens in the book of daniel such as you know nebuchadnezzar the king of uh, the babylon empire had this dream and he to told all his um he told all his, um, you know, wise men, astrologers, magicians to interpret the dream. But he told them that um, he's not going to tell them what the dream is. So they have to tell him what the dream is that he dreamed and what the dream was about. And no one could. But then Daniel um, prayed to God for that knowledge. And he... Um, and he did, and God gave him the knowledge of exactly what the dream is. So he told the King Nebuchadnezzar what the dream is and what it was meant. And it was like a prophecy of like 
all the kingdoms coming and the final kingdom was God's kingdom that would last forever. But um, it's interesting. And then, you know, then there's the story of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. They were, they went to um, bow down to the, the, um, the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. So they were thrown in the fire, but the fire didn't touch them. Um, there was a fourth person, like an angel protecting them in there. Um, there's other prophecies and dreams and uh, there's Daniel being thrown in the lion's den and the lions didn't attack him. And, um, and Daniel, the Babylon empire was taken over then by the Persian, Medi Persian empire. And then Daniel was in the their court um and then there's that famous god's hand the writing on the wall that is basically gave judgment to belshazzar the last king of babylon and that's when the persians took over so there's so much interesting you know things that happen all the dreams prophecy and just some amazing um events so that's interesting and then he talks about you know archaeology like for a long time, they didn't think that the king mentioned in Daniel, Belshazzar, existed. Um, but then um, they found this um, cylinder code. I don't know what the codex or but it mentioned that king. Um, you know, it's an ancient archaeological find. But uh, so I totally recommend this book. Um, this is actually the second time I've read it. There's so much great information in here, but um, it's very thorough and just um, in engaging. So. This is it against the floor flow by John Lennox. So that's all today. Thanks everyone. I'm I'm at Lake Sacagawea. On a peninsula. Um, all right, talk to everyone later. Have a good day. God goodbye. God bless.